with Kentucky Derby owner Keith Asmussen. Keith, how does that sound when you hear Kentucky Derby owner? It don't sound real. You know, it just kind of sounds like somebody's echo off a distance. Yeah, I never expected to get to this level. You've had horses for so long, breaking horses. You've been in the fairs. You've been all over the place. What does it mean that you're finally here with this horse? Like I said, it's kind of unbelievable, but it's a uh, good feeling. Yeah, this is the top of the hill. For me, I've come a long race. What a lot of people don't know is that you break a lot of horses for your son, Steve, and you know, Superstock is certainly one of them. What did he show you when you were breaking him? He was a nice horse, but he was real slow developing. In fact, we didn't get him to the races till pretty late, because he had just closed his knees and matured. But he, uh, he always showed to be pretty aggressive and everything was real easy to him. Uh, I probably wouldn't have picked him in the first 60 days as a uh, get this far along, but he just keeps getting better. And you're from a racing family, right? Both your kids, Cash was a great jockey for so long. Steve was a jockey for a little while, got a little short, too big. Short term. <laughs> became a, became the, the Hall of Fame trainer that he is. But this horse was actually ridden by your grandson when it started out. I know you and Keith, your grandson, are very, very close. What was yes. that like? knowing that Keith was able to ride this horse. Ah, oh, that's great. Yeah, that was, at the time, it was super good, you know. It was a stake, 100,000. 100, and so what was the uh, conversation like at dinner that night after he, uh, you won the futurity? Well, he first thing he said was, this is unbelievable. Yeah, we was pretty happy. And now we fast forward six months and we win the Arkansas Derby and your wife was just overcome with emotion in the winter circle. Obviously with you guys owning the horse with Irv, you've been partners for so long. Yeah. What what was that that thought when you guys were in the winter circle when I mean he was so emphatic in winning the Arkansas Derby? Yeah. Well actually we went in there thinking we'd be everybody was running for a second, actually, because that horse had beat us pretty good in the rebel. And then to win it was out of this world. And so it's been about three weeks since then, four weeks. We've had a chance to just kind of catch our breath. Have, have you slept much? Has it just been kind of every time you wake up, this is the first thing you think about, that we're, we're running for the roses on, on May much, 1st? Pretty much so, yes. And wondering how we got here. <laughs> so, but speaking of how you got here, a lot of things went at the time looked like they were going wrong for them to go incredibly right for you, right? The horse was in a sale. The sale was canceled because of COVID. Tell us the story about your grandson calling you up and asking if, because I understand there was other sales he could have gone in, asking if he could ride him in the stakes. He bypassed the trainer on it, went right to the owner. That's right. <laughs> yeah. And you said? Well, I, of course, you know, that's a soft spot. <laughs> and, and then as Steve tells it, you, once he won the stake, you're thinking, hmm, you know, there's some more upside to this horse, perhaps. So what, you were pointing towards the, I think, maybe the Kentucky Jockey Club here, and then something happened. Yeah, they, uh, mm -hmm. there were several things stopped us along the way, and now here it all come to a head in the right direction. Because Steve, had he run in the Kentucky Jockey Club, Steve thinks there's a good chance he'd have won, and you'd have had to sell. The money would have just been too Yeah, happy. that had been a turning point there, yes. So, yeah. I make a living with these horses. I can't get too big hearted about keeping them, you know. That ownership uh, can only go to a certain amount of dollars and it changes. <laughs> After, I wouldn't even know how many decades of raising top horses for other people, to have one that's one of your own, that's just good. Yeah, it's, it's something else special. Now, your son has another horse in Midnight Bourbon. Yeah, we and broke him at our training center. I've been a long time with Winchell's, I think 47, 48 years. So it would be a big for you if he won. Oh, yeah. We got no prejudice against each other. <laughs> none, 
None at all. Yeah, I'd be just as happy as he would be. Talk a little bit about people that don't know, you know, where the farm is and, and how big it is and, you know, the number of horses you normally break every year. 100, 120, I cut back. I used to break a couple of hundred or so a year. It's in South Texas, Laredo, Texas. We got 420 stalls there. Real good surface. Man, uh, he used to be the track man at Hollywood Park, put it together for us. And, uh, we've had some nice horses come through. What is the what is the key over there? You know, everyone says you know South Carolina had this going for it. Ocala has that going for it. What is it in Sa in South Texas that that makes these champions? I, I don't know. We get a lot of good bred horses. We've been lucky. We get about ninety six percent of the races. So. And and when you make the the walk over here on this afternoon. What's, what is that emotion going to be like with you and your wife and your family and the grandkids will be walking with you? What, what, what's that going to be like? Sensational. Are we going to, are we going to have to oversee Steve uh, saddling or we trust Steve to uh, get the job I done? I think he'd be all right. <laughs> Thinking of how many... He's had a lot of practice. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever raised a derby winner for somebody else? Not a winner. I've had a few that made the derby. Like Steve, that he would have had it, I would imagine. And he's been firing at this thing about 20 some times. Maybe this is the day. One more Winchell question. Would they be about the oldest client, longest that you've had now? Or do you have some that go yeah. back even longer than them? Yeah, mm -hmm. this is the second generation. I started out with his dad. But yeah, they're, they're the longest. What was it Steve was talking about that back when uh, he and Ron, um, no, he and, yeah, he and Ron Winchell didn't get an opinion. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's when Steve was still in grade school when I was breaking babies for Ron Winchell. And then just finally, as, as a father, Steve's on track right now. He, he might, by the end of the year, have the, the most winners ever as a trainer. What, what does that mean? What, is, what do you think of all of that? Yeah. I'd say he's pretty successful. <laughs> Proud of him. He's done all kinds of things. What were those conversations like when, when Cash and Steve were, were growing up as kids at the dinner table? Was it always horses all the time? Yeah. I, I used to say I didn't know any other language, you know. Been good. It's treated all of us good. Now here we are.